Welcome to the Government News Brief on Monday, November 30, 2015. In the news, the government is hoping to have the assessment on five possible hydropower sites completed by May next year, and more police patrol for the holiday season. These stories and more on today's edition of the Government News Brief. I am Azim Khan. Minister of Governance Raphael Trotman is in Paris representing Guyana at COP21. This is the largest global gathering of world leaders to address climate change. Seneca Thorne reports. Guyana is participating in the Climate Change Conference of Parties, COP21, which is being held in Paris. The conference starts today and continues until December 11. The country is being well represented by Minister of Governance with responsibility for natural resources and the environment, Raphael Trotman. Other representatives include members of civil society, indigenous groups, and youths. We must, however, acknowledge that this issue of environmental protection and climate change and impact mitigation is not to be treated with a cursory glance and must be embraced by all stakeholders. It is in Guyana's best interest that we stand united, confident in what we have to offer the world and what we seek to protect for the generations of Guyanese to come. Government has committed its... Com <coughs> Government has indicated its commitment to developing a holistic approach towards managing and mitigating the harmful effects of climate change. To this end, there is a modified policy that focuses on the development of a green economy. This covers areas beyond just the low-carbon development strategy and includes coastal zone management, raising sea levels, water management and energy generation. Government's vision for creating a green economy is based on protecting the environment, and ensuring that the country plays a greater role in mitigating climate change. The government is advancing its plans for a green economy. Out of six to seven possible sites for hydropower development, five are being assessed and these reports should be ready by May 2016. The government has identified five sites to be assessed for hydropower development. This is from a total of six to seven possible sites. The five sites are Kamira, Kumu, Chumachimari, Tiger Hill, and the mayor. According to Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson, the Inter-American Development Bank will be assessing the five sites. The government will be using $80 million from the Norway funds that were set aside for renewable energy development. At the end of this process, um, it, uh, we will obviously um, assess them. However, we will look at to uh, um, use the $8 million in the most acceptable means of renewable energy. And um, in the short or the medium term, that does not actually have to be a, um, a hydro. It, it can be any form of large-scale renewable energy. That is the understanding that we have. So it's a process in which we are going through. Um, and I think it's a, it's a wise way to go forward. Government is also working through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with the Government of Brazil and other interested stakeholders in seeking additional funding for the Hydropower Renewable Energy Project. We are moving ahead and we, we, we will, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, continuing discussions with them. Um, there, are, so there are other individuals who have MOUs, you know, I mean, I, talk, um, at, um, I think it's Kumu Falls. Um, there, is, uh, a, there is a company that has a MOU with us in which we are... Um, um, and it remains to, to develop that falls. Too much marriage is a private company. Um, Moko Moko, we're going out for a, 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 an expression of interest um, to resuscitate um, the Moko Moko um, Hydro Falls. So we haven't excluded any project. It's always a question of um, time and cost. Ghana has an abundance of wind, sun, and water renewable energy that has been identified as a growth industry. Harnessing that potential would be a game changer for the country as it is believed that Guyana has enough capacity to not only satisfy its own energy needs but to sell excess to its neighbors. With the anticipated influx of shoppers in the capital city, the Guyana police force has put more boots on the ground as it ramps up security measures for the Christmas season. The Guyana police force has initiated its annual Christmas season crime security plan. This entails the placing of more ranks on city streets. Some ranks who were doing administrative duties have been reassigned to the streets for the season. This is according to Crime Chief Superintendent Wendell Blanham. Blanham said that in addition to increased foot patrols, there will also be more vehicular patrols in and around Georgetown. 
Many of these will be concentrated in the busy commercial districts and include night spots, commercial banks and post offices. Sniffer dogs will also be used during patrols. Our Christmas policing arrangement in place and we are hoping that that initiative will have a very great impact on this crime our present crime situation and our crime fighting efforts. The police force's traffic department will continue its zero-tolerance campaign against traffic offenders. They will be on the lookout for drunk drivers, speedsters, drivers using cell phones while driving and overloaded minibuses and hire cars. Observe the rules of the road and remember, do not use electronic devices while you're driving and try as far as possible not to be distracted. And most important, do not drink and drive. The plan came into effect on November 15 and will continue until the first half of January 2016. For the Government News Brief, I'm Shanta Gobardan reporting. The inaugural Business Exposition 2015, aimed at giving recognition and opportunities to small and budding entrepreneurs, has certainly achieved its objectives. Gina spoke with some of the exhibitors at the recently completed expo. Here is what they had to say. Approximately 300 local small businesses had the chance to sell their products, network with other small businesses, advertise their products and services, build their client base, and establish linkages with large businesses. It's been great. Um, I don't see there's anything like to sell a lot, but I, it's good for you to advertise and get your name out there. It's good because we don't have a lot of competition from big huge businesses that happened before that overshadowed the craft and so it's it's good to have that exposure I, we really appreciate it. This expo is very good. It aims to reach you out to Diana. Most people who are new and new they will have to see and have get a lot of a lot of wanting to come on the board. It takes me to process fish. That's why I'm very happy. Everything in itself is not a very good job. This business expo at this time here is a good achievement to at least bring out Guyanese creativity, give Guyanese to see what Guyanese is doing, that's, that's what I like about it. And you know as everything else, um, because Guyanese people have been so much more or less loving a lot of foreign things. You know, and it, this time here now, it's giving Guyanese a chance now to really come out to see what Guyana is producing, that they could even change some of the thinking that what they have, that, oh, everything from foreign is good, we got good stuff, we got good things. It allows Guyanese to see what is being produced here in Guyana, and that's a good thing, because even when I walk around this uh, exhibit, I'm amazed at what I think the Business Expo is the right direction and um, here is where the artists get a chance or you can say an opportunity to showcase their work, not just to the, the Guyanese um, populace but to the wider world. The event, which also had buyers and investors in attendance, was held from November 27 to 29, 2015 at the Sophia Exhibition Complex under the theme Guyanese Products and Services, Our Gateway to the Good Life. It was the first local exhibition where the emphasis was totally on small local businesses. For the Government News Brief, I'm Shanta Gobardan reporting. On Sunday, Minister of Social Cohesion Amna Ali commissioned a bridge at the Kendra and West Coast de Mararo. The bridge will provide an alternative route for school children in the village, keeping them away from the busy public road. Shanazalo reports. The Dikendran Community Group has successfully completed its first project. The project, which was the construction of a bridge to link the communities, Dikendran and Metimirzog, was done in collaboration with the residents and financial support from the business community. This is the first of many projects which the group intends to undertake for the development of their community. This project was initiated to create better infrastructure for the residents in the West Coast Demerara community, thus giving them a better life. The determination of the APNU and AFC coalition government is to bridge existing gaps across Guyana. Some of these gaps are inequalities create unfair distribution across ethnic groups, geographical locations and even age. This government will be readdressing these issues. We have always said that we are a caring government. 
we are a caring people. And today, the residents of this, the Kendren understand it no different. You know, comrades, because of this bridge, I am told, our school children can now utilize the bridge to get to school without having to use the public road. Isn't that thoughtful? And so, it is good to know that the residents of this community can make a contribution and provide a better life for all the people of the Kindred. For the government, its work started from the day it entered office and development for Guyana is now the order of the day. In order to achieve that change, Amna Ali, Minister of Social Cohesion, pointed out that the will for change is also required. I want to tell you that we, in this new government, we have a lot of cleanup to do. But we will clean it up. And we will move forward during our tenure to give you that better life. I want to caution, however, that don't expect everything to happen in a day. It will take time, but gradually we are going to get there and we hope and I know that this community will not be one of any of the communities that is going to be discriminated against. Minister Ali heads a newly created Ministry of Social Cohesion. The mandate is to foster unity amongst the people of Guyana after being placed in office. For the government news brief, Shanaz Lo reporting. That has brought us to the end of the government news brief on Monday, November 30, 2015. Audio programs can be viewed on our website. You can also find us on Facebook and on YouTube. Our Guyana Nice photo for today is from camera woman Kenyan Bacchus. Send us your Guyana Nice photo so you too can be featured.